Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Crystal and this is my social thread. Um, another Friday Sews vlog for you where I'll be covering the past two weeks and I have got five uh, makes to share with you um, plus um, some fabric hauls from various uh, different fabric shops um, and that's it. Um, first of all, what I'm wearing, I'm wearing the Sew House 7 Toaster Sweater. Um, it's got sort of this funnel neck, deep cuffs, raglan sleeves and this is made up in a cable knit jersey. Um, and yeah, let's begin. So the first item I have made over the past two weeks is the Elodie or the Elodie wrap dress by Closet Core Patterns. I think they're called Closet Case now. I'm not sure which one, but I'll pop up the photo. I don't have the pattern to hand, unfortunately. And here she is. I have made this in a linen cotton mix from Pound Fabrics. And it's basically a white background with sort of a blue, uh, variating blue uh, rose print. Now I bring it closer, you can see the lovely linen texture there. And essentially, come in, Sienna. Sorry, I just have a coffee, coffee and uh, whisper type of day. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and essentially the Elodi wrap dress is a full wrap dress and it has, um, I call them sort of the kimono sleeve. So it's a grown on sleeve, as you can see there. Uh, there's no um, partition between the bodice and the sleeve. So it is actually fair, fairly easy. So it has a facing all the way around the front um, of the bodice, all the way around the neckline. And then it has ties, a waistband and a wrap skirt. It doesn't have pockets. I was going to put pockets in. But then to be honest with you, when I was making this dress, it was one of those patterns that Although the instructions were very easy and I could pretty much figure out what I was doing without having to read them fully, I just didn't enjoy making this pattern at all. Um, I'm not sure why, um, I just didn't enjoy it. So the one thing that stood out for me is that all of the pieces had to be stay stitched. Is it called stay stitched? Yeah, all of the pieces had to be stay stitched or all of the skirt pieces had to be stay stitched, I believe. And to me, so the skirt is made up out of um, one two, three, four panels. So two for the front and two for the back. It's got a center back seam. And um, the stay stitching, I understand why they do it, is so that obviously the fabrics won't stretch whilst you're working with them. So then all the pieces will um, come together beautifully. But at the time when I was doing it, I just thought this is a waste of time. Um, it probably took me a good, I don't know, half an hour, maybe to an hour to stay stitch every single piece. And I think for me, the reason why I thought it was a waste of time is because it's stay stitching. You're not actually joining seams. You're not actually joining, creating seams. You're not joining fabric together. <clears throat> you are just kind of preparing the fabric. Um, I still did it anyway. And I just kind of like, you know, trod, tr trotted along. Um, it's not trodded what's the word trundled along and just followed the instructions um it all came together actually quite beautifully the facing i always love when a good when a facing fits properly all the way around the neckline um and the end result i really really like so that just goes to show sometimes when you aren't enjoying a pattern uh, just to keep going because you've started you've done it already you've you know you've pre-washed the fabric you've cut the fabric cut the pattern you're ready to go if it's not going too well or if you're not enjoying it just keep going maybe put it aside for a while for for a couple of hours or even a couple of days and go back to it if you're really annoyed by the pattern or the fabric um, and you never know that the the resulting article might be a really really nice one and my one is i actually do really really like it Let let me post some photos while I go through my notes. What is this called? This is called the ah nope. Bidi 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 um Elodie wrap dress. Okay, I still don't have it. Don't know why I can't find it. Maybe I didn't do a thing on the Elodie wrap dress. Okay, so the one thing. So oh here it is. I did a size twelve um and the details of the dress as i say it's a full wrap dress with a waistband um the skirt and the bodice has a center back seam it has pleats on the front and that's it and the kimono sleeves i think is the main is the main um sort of design feature for this pattern i think it really it looks really really nice um my daughter actually wears this dress um, and she really, really likes it. It is a bit unseasonal because of um, of the colour, but she wears it with a, a long sleeve blue top underneath and then a coat on top, um, so it doesn't look too bad. Uh, but for the summer, obviously, she would just wear it as a dress without anything underneath. Um, so the only thing that I got confused about was when I was doing the waist ties, 
Um, everything was all step by step, you know, fully illustrated instructions. But then when it came to creating the hole at the side of the bodice so that your, your tie goes through, I couldn't see it in the instructions. They just said sort of like now put your, you know, put your tie through the hole. But there was no hole. So I kept looking back. I went back over the instructions, reread it again, reread it again. And I couldn't see where they instructed me to create a hole for the for the tie. So I just kind of made my own hole in the side seam over here, the side seam of the waistband. And then I just uh, sewed it down from the inside. And then the um, the tie goes, goes through there. Um, but yeah, overall, very happy with that. It is um, actually a quite an easy sew. As I say, there's no setting in of the sleeves. There's no zips or fastening. The only problem I had was with the tie. And the reason it was a problem is because I couldn't find the instructions. Had there been instructions, I'm sure it would have been an easy enough uh, thing to do. And there you go. So that was my first make of the past two weeks. Uh, the fabric is from Pound Fabrics and it was really inexpensive. Probably no more than six pounds a meter for a beautiful cotton linen mix. Um, so that's that one. Uh, the next thing I made, I'll leave these two for last because these are indigos and I have spoken a lot about indigos in the past because I have, um, when I find a pattern that I like, I just tend to make them, I make, make lots of versions of them. So I'll leave that to the end. Um, Lyra. So the next one thing I did make was my Lyra. Um, I have made lots of Lyras in the past. But this is my first Lyra, long sleeve Lyra of the season. And there will be more because I quite like wearing dresses. And obviously with the autumn winter coming, long sleeves are a must. Um, not, not, more, not just because it keeps you a bit warmer, but also I find where I'm liking sort of the poofy sleeves that are three quarters or sort of um, short sleeve as it were. The poofy sleeves is what I like. Um, they are very difficult to get under coats and cardigans. You can't actually, well, you can get them in, but then you can't, it's all bunched up at the top because there's nothing to pull down, um, to pull, you can't pull the sleeve down to make it go under the sleeve of your coat properly. So I find it really awkward and uncomfortable to wear with, with a coat or cardigan on top. So anyway, <laughs> going back to what I was talking about, this is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra dress. Actually, let me show you the pattern. Tilly and the Buttons Lyra, one of my favourite dresses um and it is a shirt dress long sleeve short sleeve you can also have short skirt or tiered longer skirts um you can have tie a tie as well buttons stand up collar and it's got bust starts as well this goes up from a size uk6 bust of 30 waist of 24 all the way up to a uk24 bust of 48 waist of 42 and I have made it in a beautiful viscose linen mix from Pound Fabrics again in their khaki green colorway. And just some lovely buttons, which I got from eBay. I think they're like flat sort of pearlized green shank buttons. I've made the long sleeve version with the elasticated cuffs. And I've also added the ties this time. So when I've made... Um, when I've made Lyra's in the past, I never used to add the ties because I used to always wear them with a belt. And now I quite like the option of a, of a tie because you don't need a belt um, and you don't have to worry about a belt matching your outfit. And actually, anyway, I like the ties. So I've started making them with ties now. Um, and it's a lovely, I mean, I know I, I like the Lyra's. I've made many before. I love the fit of it. I love the look of it. Um, and so this is another one that I have made. The only thing I will say is with this fabric, it does have a bit of stretch in it. Now, when I was looking on Pound Fabrics, I think the content of the stretch was really minimal, or even if it had a sort of elastane in it at all, um, although it did say in the description that it had some stretch, and I thought, well, that's not really going to matter so much, um, so I made this up. And what I found was, despite me using exactly the same pattern that I have used before, exactly the same method of sewing, there was a good uh, inch um, more bodice so my shoulder instead of the shoulder the sleeve ending up here it was sort of over here um, which is really odd because as I say I've made this pattern and again and again and so what I did is I tried on my previous Lyra dresses and they were perfectly fine so I was thinking what's happened here and I'm thinking maybe because of the stretch of the fabric it has kind of drooped downwards or it might have stretched out as I was sewing it Although, to be fair, the collar didn't stretch out at all. So that fitted perfectly. Um, that fitted perfectly all the way around. 
because normally the collar tends to stretch um, a little bit when you're working with with garments that have stretch so anyway what I ended up doing unfortunately is having to unpick the whole sleeve so that was overlock stitches and normal sewing machine stitches unpick all of that um, and I bet no actually I didn't unpick it I was really lazy actually what I did was I um, actually just went from the inside I just went from the inside this is really naughty you mustn't do this because um you could ruin your your garment but I went inside and I just did a basting stitch so I just made a bigger seam allowance and I did a basting stitch all the way around by a good inch and then I tried it on and it was perfect so then I went ahead cut off the old um overlocking stitches and stitched stitched it up properly on my machine and my overlocker I'm going to sneeze sorry <coughs> 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 sorry <laughs> um and it worked perfectly now uh, the reason why i just went ahead and did that is because i thought um i had made the dress i was so excited to try it on and i was really disappointed that this had happened and it never happened before and i thought you know what the fabric i think this was like three or four pounds a meter so this whole dress all in all was about 12 pounds a meter and i thought well if it goes wrong it goes wrong it's only 12 pounds kind of thing and i did it anyway and it worked out really really nicely but i wouldn't recommend doing it unless um you didn't really matter how it turned out if that makes sense so if you would use a nice um you know sort of more expensive fabric or it was anyway I wouldn't recommend it uh, but I suppose if you baste it with sort of number five your longest um stitch on your sewing machine just baste it down see what it looks like and if it looks okay then go ahead and do it and at least with the basting stitches you can easily unpick those and um get rid of them but yeah that's my Lyra I'll post up some photos So with my Lyra's, as I say, I have done them before and I have done a forward shoulder adjustment on my bodice for the Lyra. There are lots of tutorials on this. I believe I followed So Essential on YouTube. They do some lovely tutorials, actually. I've also followed them for the burrito method in enclosing yolks. Uh, so I followed that with a forward shoulder adjustment and I now use that body pe bodice piece for all of my Lyra's. Um, Although, funnily enough, all the other Tilly and the Buttons patterns, I don't need to use the forward shoulder um, adjustment. But with the Lyra, um, I do. And I've just kept that bodice piece uh, for my future um, <clears throat> for my future makes. So that's that one. Uh, the next one I want to show you is my um, blog post for Little Miss So-and-So. Um, I do have a separate vlog for this, so I will go through it really quickly. Um, I'm a brand ambassador for Little Miss So-and-So and, -so, and I received their So Luxurious All Set to Sew Kits. And last month's um, box, I received the Na Natasha Tid dress by Liberty Fabrics. And I received um, this beautiful Atelier Brunette um, Ochre Twig Viscose Twill. Oh, that kind of looks lovely. Oh, that's, that's I think that's the perfect colour. The twill, uh, it's just beautifully drapey. It's just so luxurious and it's beautiful. So I made uh, this Natasha dress up. I did do a bit of a couple of hacks. So I added this frill and I got this frill from the um, Tilly and the Buttons Marnie blouse dress. And then I also added sleeves from another pattern. This is from the Onella blouse from Mood Fabrics, which I have used before because I love the gathered uh, shoulders, uh, the gathered shoulder heads, shoulder, what are these called? Sleeve heads. And I love sort of the bishop sleeves with a cuff. And the great thing about this cuff is it doesn't need any fastenings, any buttons or anything. So it's just the exact circumference to put your arm in, um, to put your arm in, to put your wrist in. And um, it, you could take it in, off, off and on without any with ease and it's, and it's fine. So I really like this uh, sleeve pattern. Um, so the Natasha dress is a tear dress. I'll show you the variations. Uh, you've got the plain body, a short sleeve. This is like a box pleated skirt. Then you've got the addition, you've got the option to add a ruffle. Then you've got sleeveless versions, tiered skirt with the ruffles as well. I went for this version here, but again, I changed the sleeves, as I've said, and I've added a ruffle. You also have a button um, thing at the back. And this, um, it comes in two band sizes. So I went for the larger size, which is the 14 to 22 sizes. And unfortunately, I didn't have a good time making this dress because I ended up going for 
um, my bust would make me um, go under a size 14 according to the measurements so it's 92 centimeters here I don't have the the um, what's it called the um, calculation for what 92 centimeters is in inches uh, and I can't do my phone I can't search my phone because I'm talking to you on my phone uh, so I went for the size 14 because my my measurements fell under the um, 92 bust and 71 waist in centimeters and my friend Adele is also Adele so for serenity she is also a brand ambassador for little miss so and so and she did the size 14 as well and her bust is slightly smaller than mine so I and I saw her vlog um and I thought her, the, the the dress looked perfect like the bust fit perfectly on her and I thought well if her bust is smaller than mine and that bodice fits perfectly around her bust I need to go up a size because my bust will not fit in that dress so I went for a size 16 in the end unfortunately there are no finished measurements there is just a finished um length of the dress which is a bit odd like why would you put the finished length measurements at the back of the envelope but not the finished bust or the finished waist which is more important than the length because length I think most people don't really follow the lengths of dresses they just sort of add or take away what they need according to how they want their dress to be so anyway there's no finished measurements uh, on the pattern uh, envelope but on the actual pattern sheet um on the bust um piece uh, there are some finished bust measurements which I thought okay let's go with that let's see how that works out um, so I went for the size 16 unfortunately it was way way too big um, like super super big I ended up having to take at least two inches from each side so that's four inches at the waist and even still now it's still quite a baggy fit so I have the tie to tie up at the back and um, also the shoulder I had the shoulder problem where instead of the um, shoulder seam ending up here it was sort of way down here by a good inch um, and um, it just was a disaster basically and I was really really quite upset over it because the fabric was beautiful obviously it's a it's a blog post where I will have to show off the photos I can't just say oh it, it didn't turn out well I've just thrown it in the bin kind of thing um, I am obviously obligated to show um, uh, the, the dress that I've made up um, and so this was the time where I had to unpick the sleeve overlocker and stitched sleeves um, unpick it um, reduce some of the arm side and I did have to reduce it by a good inch um, <clears throat> and then reattach the sleeves and that seemed to have done the trick I can't find the bodice piece at the moment so I can try and show you I have oh here it is yeah so this is the bodice piece here and um, if I can find my yeah. I can find it here so, oh, here it is. Can I do it that way? So this is a, <clears throat> a slightly similar, um, slightly different. Um, no, this one works fine actually. So I can't find the pattern piece. Um, ah, here I found it. So as I say, I cut out the 16. It was very, very big, and I had a, a, an inch left over on the shoulder seam. Uh, it was hanging over by an inch. And then I looked at my Atelier the Buttons Indigo bodice, which I love, and it's my go-to pattern. And I just compared the bodices, and I'll show you the comparison of the bodices. Obviously, they are slightly different in shape and size. The neckline is different, but if I show you them... Um, so this is the Tilly and the Buttons pattern, and the tissue paper is the Liberty. There is a lot of um, extra... Um, I don't know what that bit is called, sort of... Um, bit at the bodice where it will meet the the sleeves so then um that kind of told me that definitely the pattern was way off and I was just really upset because it is a Liberty pattern actually going back to the main point I have just found out that Liberty fabrics patterns they don't actually uh, print their own patterns they have a licensing agreement with McCall's and they use McCall's patterns and unfortunately it sounds really horrible actually that they actually use McCall's patterns but they repackage it and label it as Liberty and charge you more for it which is again really quite upsetting um and um, because, you know, Liberty, they've only just recently uh, started doing patterns. And for independent pattern companies, you normally get a pattern and a pattern um, instruction booklet, beautifully printed, blah, blah, blah. And their instructions just come in um, these A3 sheets, which most of you will recognize as being uh, big four companies do their instructions like this. So anyway, so that's another point. 
Um, so yeah, I think the sizing is way off. And then a comment, one of the people, uh, one of the love, one of my lovely viewers commented below saying, perhaps I, because I had done the size 16, everything was just too big because I went for such a big size. And I thought, actually, fair enough, that's a good point. So I had to look back at the pattern and I thought, to be fair, even if I was going to go for the 14, according to my body measurements, I mean, a 14, there is barely any difference in the body. So this is a 16 and this is the 14. There's barely a bit of, um, there's like, what, a centimetre of difference between the shoulder seam, at the waist, maybe an, a centimetre and a half, uh, at the arm psych, half a centimetre. So I don't think that would have solved my problem. Um, and even if I went down to a size 10 or a 12, I'm assuming a 10 would sort of be another uh, centimeter and a, a 12 would be another centimeter and a 10 would be another centimeter there. Um, even so, I don't think it would have fit anyway. I just think it's poorly, poorly drafted, but that's obviously just my opinion. If anybody has made this pattern before and they've loved it, please do let me know just so that I don't totally lose confidence in any of the Liberty patterns because there are a couple of designs that I have liked in the past. Um, actually, I might try and find the McCall's equivalent of the Liberty patterns because you get them for cheaper. And, you know, why get them for more if you can get them for cheaper? Um, so that's that one. Um, <clears throat> I'll post up photos of myself wearing it. So again, similarly with the Closet Cora Lodi, even though I didn't like making it, well, I wouldn't say I didn't like making it, even though I came across a lot of challenges <clears throat> and I had to do a lot of adjustments to the pattern, it ended up being a really, really nice dress, which I love. So the, these are the photos coming up right now. And then the only other thing, let me just check my notes. Oh, I did add an inch to the bodice as well. Added the frill, as I say, from the Tilly and the Buttons um, Marnie dress. <clears throat> and also the other thing that I wasn't quite happy with was doing this, um, what is, I don't know what this is called, this keyhole part here. Um, so this little loop here, I don't even know if they give you instructions for that. But again, I used a tutorial by Tilly and the Buttons where she shows you how to make belt loops. Um, it's basically almost like crocheting thread to make a loop. Um, but this part here, um, is basically a facing that you turn in on itself, but I couldn't get this bit here to lie flat. And so, um, I do want to see if I can find the tutorial on how to do a keyhole where that bit lies flat, uh, because I wasn't very happy with how that ended up. Um, and then that's, that's that. So that's the next dress that I made. And then... Following that, it's another couple of um, Tilly and the Buttons sewing indigo dresses. So I'll show you the pattern. If you do follow me, you'll know that I've made these lots before. Tilly and the Buttons indigo. Variations, where well, you can just do a smock blouse or a smock dress. It's got bust starts, gathered sleeves, and you can also buy the extension where you can have the puff sleeve, a long bishop sleeve, and the short sleeve. Um, this goes up from a UK size 6, bust of 30, waist of 24, all the way up to UK 24, bust of 48, waist of 42. I make the size 5 in this one, so it's a bust of 38, waist of 32. And I will show you them here. So this version right here is actually for my daughter, my almost 12 year old daughter, and I have made it with the short puff sleeves. This is a beautiful cotton lawn hydrangea print from Rifle Paper Company, which I bought from Lush Fabrics, Lush Cloth, sorry. And I've got a little tag in there that says, I made this for you. Really the for you should be the other way around, but it's not. <laughs> so anyway, that's that with the tiered, um, tiered panels and the waist ties, which I have added. I don't believe the indigo have waist ties, but I just made those myself and I'll pop up some photos of my daughter wearing it. And then the last one I made is the same indigo dress, but I've used the, um, sleeves from the Stylark Bell, which I just love, these poofy sleeves, elasticated cuff. This is made up of a linen chambray um, base cloth uh, floral from Lady McElroy Fabrics. 
and I just put a little tag in there myself. I love the indigo because I know it fits me. It fits my daughter very well. I love how the facing sort of sews together beautifully, sits beautifully, and there's no sort of puckering or anything at the neckline. I love the shape of it. I love the flow of it. I love the pockets. I use to lean the buttons pockets for most of my patterns now. So where there is a pattern in the dress, I just omit that and I just use, I get the tilly and the buttons pattern piece and I use the instructions for that for all of my patterns that I like to put pockets into. Let me add photos for you as well for that one. I'm just going to have a sip of coffee. And um, yeah, so it's the 30th of September today. Um, I will be filming my roundup of the month vlog, hopefully this weekend. And also my plans vlog, hopefully for the coming month of October. Can you believe it's October? I'm also taking part in the Sew Up Cycle Challenge hosted by Karen of So Little Time and Becky of Notes from a Sewing Room. If that's correct, I'm sure it is correct. I'm sure it's Becky and Karen. It is Becky and Karen. Yeah, it is Becky and Karen. So I will be doing a separate vlog um, for them on that on the 13th of October. <clears throat> oh, also, I was supposed to do, <clears throat> sorry, the Heather Blazer by Friday Pattern Company. That's a collaboration with Adele and Claire. Unfortunately, we were all a bit delayed, all a little bit behind, busy with life and work and everything else. And so that's being pushed over to the 8th of um, October. So the reveal date will be for that. And mine has come out really, really nicely, actually. So I was planning to do it in a linen mix, uh, a linen, pink linen outer, and then a Lady McElroy inner lawn cotton lawn as the lining but I was looking at it and I thought actually this is really quite springy summery not very good for this time of the year so I totally changed it that was supposed to be for my wearable twirl anyway and I had bought a fabric already for my proper heather and I just decided to go ahead <coughs> and do that straight away <coughs> excuse me and I really really love the heather blazer I think I mean, I won't talk about it too much, although I am talking about it a lot now. I think um, despite there not being that much tailoring, well, I don't, I don't really know what tailoring techniques are, but it has no shoulder pads. You know, it was all, there was no um, pad stitching or what have you. But I thought it came out really, really nice. Like it was really, really nice. It looked really beautifully tailored to me. I loved how it turned out. It was, I mean, it was a canvas that I made it up from. I can't show you now, as I say, because we're, we're waiting for next week for that reveal. And I like it so much that, I have decided that my next blogger project for Jenny Stitches Fabrics will be a longer version of the Heather Blazer um, in a wool, beautiful ex um, Laura Ashley coating, navy coating with some beautiful printed cotton lawn as the lining. And I'm going to make um, it longer, as I say, so it, it will essentially be like a single breasted sort of formal coat. So I'm very excited and I will, of course, show you that when that arrives. The last thing I wanted to talk about was just a bit of a fabric uh, fabric haul. So my husband gifted me some um, some fabric, um, so I got to choose what, what I wanted. And obviously I went for some Liberty fabrics. And oddly they posted it in several boxes, which is a bit odd. But um, So I won't show you this, but it's got my address on it. And the boxes are actually, their boxes have their own Liberty. Um, so it says Liberty in there. And then you get just your invoice. Liberty tissue paper and there was 30% off actually on Liberty as well so that's quite nice so these are all very springy summer fabrics but I thought obviously I could buy it now keeping my stash until um, spring summer and this the first one I bought I did not know that uh, Liberty did linen bases uh, so this is a linen mix I believe it's cotton linen. It's quite a high content of linen. I think it's 80-20 or 70-30. And it's in their one of their classic designs, the Betsy. Um, and it's called the Betsy Augusta Linen. And it's this beautiful print here. I mean, from far away, doesn't that just look dreamy? Like, summery, floaty, really pretty dress. Um, and then up close. I don't know if you can see the linen texture. But that's the Betsy. Um, with the linen, they have this in this colorway, and I believe the blue colorway as well. But in the cotton lawn, they have them in loads of different colorways, the, the actual Betsy print. So that's really nice. I got three meters of that. Um, and it's beautiful. It's almost, it feels like a cotton lawn. It feels like they're tying a cotton lawn, but wow, this is actually really long. Um, but it's, it's slightly thicker, and it's nice. No, I love linen, and it's nice knowing that you've got a different base option from liberty so that's that one the next um 
thing I got was again from Liberty and I got their, it, it came again in exactly the same sort of box and I got their Strawberry Thief Organic print on a Tana Cotton Lawn and it's this colourway here, I got it up the right way. So it's this beautiful colourway here up close, there you go, that's the classic William Morris um, Strawberry Thief print but it's in like blues with hints of pinks which is really really lovely and i think that would make a lovely beautiful summer dress um so this is in their organic range which is a bit annoying because it basically by putting organic it makes it a bit more expensive and i don't know why well not all of their fabric is organic to be fair but i thought well, I thought it was a bit cheeky that <laughs> all of their fabric is expensive anyway. But by adding um, organic, obviously, the price went up by a couple more pounds. Um, but I really, really love that print because I've not seen um, this colourway for this particular print. So um, there you go. So I was a bit confused as well because I know it's a William Morris print. But I did a little bit of research. And what I found out was um, they started using this print back in the 70s, I think. I'm not sure a good 20 30 years ago and basically liberty fabrics redrew the print so it's technically their original print now because they've redrawn redrawn it and um made the scale a bit smaller so i suppose when you redraw everything you're not actually using anybody else's um copyrighted designs um and in their um description they don't say william morris at all they just say liberty tana lawn strawberry thief although everybody will know strawberry thief is an original william morris design but anyway that's that one that's really beautiful um have no ideas for these yet what i'm going to do i quite like the idea of a oh my battery is going i quite like the idea of a um, floaty dress i mean i love floaty dresses but yeah no plans for these as such yet and then Little Miss So-and-So were also doing um, a discount on their Liberty Fabrics. And so I got, this is a quilting cotton Liberty Fabric print. And it's this one here. So slightly more darker colours. Looks really nice from afar, actually. It's funny, isn't it? When you look closely at fabric, I always like to look closely and then from afar just to see what it looks like from afar. And from afar, I'm really, really liking it. So this is a quilting cotton, so slightly uh, cheaper than the Tana cotton lawn. Um, and it's uh, more structure, obviously, uh, less drape, but beautiful bright colours. And it's Liberty, which I love. Uh, and then what else did I get? Oh, I also plan to make the closet core... Um, Kelly Anorak uh, this month I believe with um, Adele from Sofa Serenity and I went ahead and I bought their kits from um, I don't even know where they're based Canada I think it's in Canada so you get um, closet core patterns it's a little kit and you get all the um, I can't even show you what's in it does it show you what's in it so you get 15 spring snap buttons, three six millimeter grommets, tools to install the grommets and buttons, 1.5 yards black cotton drawstring cord, two spring cord locks, two cord stoppers, 26 inch black separating coat zipper. And that's everything that you need for the Kelly Anorak, which I'm very excited to make actually. Um, all the bits and pieces in here. Um, and it's nice that their kits come in sort of little um, Coleco bags. Oh, these are all the tools and things for for inserting the grommets and I thought you know what it was actually I was I was trying to look for all these things myself and um as most of you will know looking for grommets and things you know cord stops it they are easy to find but finding the right colorway for all of the things that you need was quite hard so there's there's brass there's antique brass there's gold there's silver there's black and I just thought it was just a headache trying to look for everything and I thought this kit I believe was like 18 pounds um and I just thought everything's in there. It's exactly what I need. They give you spares if you make a mistake or if you want to practice. And also what I basically wanted to get was um, the tailoring kit for the Jessica blazer. Now that is even harder to find all the things for because you need so many different interfacings. You need horsehair interfacing. You need, I don't know what the other ones are called, but quite a lot of different interfacings that you need for the Jessica blazer, which I don't think I have at the moment here. But um, basically these 
shoulder pads this is the horse hair so it's all there everything you need for this blazer is in there and that was the main reason i wanted to buy from from their canada shop because they don't actually sell these kits anywhere else um, and i thought well since i'm buying that i might as well just buy the um the uh, kit for the uh, the hardware kit for the kelly anorak so i'm pretty much all set for making that um and then the last thing I wanted to show you was a, a bit of a fabric haul from Jenny Stitches Fabrics. I bought some lovely, lovely brushed cotton from them. Uh, oh, so well, first of all, this is a brushed um, wool mix, actually. So it's like a Prince of Wales pattern with like some green going through it. And it is, so from the outside, it's like a nice woolly texture. Uh, but from the inside, can you see, so that's the outside. And then from the inside, can you see sort of that fuzzy? It's like a beautiful brush. So I was thinking maybe like a coat again that you don't have to line or like a duster, something like that. Or even like a dress, you know, because that would look so that would feel so beautiful and warm in the autumn winter. So maybe like the sew over it. Um what is that dress called? Betty. So over at Betty dress, which I haven't made before, but I've had the pattern for years and years. So that was from so that was from um, Jenny Stitches. I also bought uh, this fabric here. So this is a cotton as well. It's a tartan, and I think it's quite nice for like a Christmassy dress of some sort for the girls. And the reverse of this is also brushed. Let me show you. I hope my battery doesn't die out of me. Uh, So you can see, can you see that? It just feel, it just look. That's the brushed, um, brushed side, and that's the um, right side. So I got that from Jenny Stitches, um, and Jenny, by the way, all of her fabrics are really, really gorgeous, and they are so, so affordable. So definitely do check her out if you don't already buy from her. And I believe that's all I have to show you uh, at this time. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as I say, I will have my roundup vlog coming up out this weekend and my plans vlog coming out as well, hopefully a day or two after that. Um, if you don't already subscribe, please do kindly think about um, liking and subscribing. Thank you so much for all my subscribers that have, have signed up so far. I think I'm on 1,700 or so, which is super, super amazing. I could... Uh, 1,700 people basically following me and wanting to know what I talk about <laughs> is really <clears throat> is really really great thank you so much and i hope to see you again next time thank you bye bye